Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy, and what I have for you here is a lovely geometry word problem. So let me go ahead and read the problem to you. It says a flagpole is three meters tall and it casts a shadow of five meters long. Now at the same time, there is a tree nearby this flagpole and it casts a shadow of 62 meters. So how tall is the tree? All right, so hopefully you can figure this out. This is not that complicated. Do not be intimidated by this word problem. I'm not gonna be using calculus or fancy trigonometry to solve this. So I'm just kind of giving you some encouragement here, but I don't wanna give you too many hints because I wanna give you a full opportunity for you to solve this problem on your own. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second, then I'm gonna fully explain this problem step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the solution. Again, the question is, is how tall is this tree? Of course, we have this flag casting a certain shadow. We know uh, the shadow of the tree. So based upon this information, how tall is the tree? Well, the tree is 37.2 meters tall. That is the correct solution. And if you got this right, that is very impressive. Matter of fact, you definitely earned a nice little happy face and an A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you understand what's going on here, okay? What's going on here is a similar triangle problem, okay? We're gonna be using uh, uh, ratios and proportions to solve this. We do not need uh, trigonometry uh, to solve this problem. So if you were thinking that, oh, I need to use sine and cosine, now, you could use sine and cosine. Uh, yes, you could. Well, let me think about this before I actually say this. Um, yes, you could use this, but that would be like the long, long route in order to figure this thing out. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the problem. And anytime you're dealing with any word problem, I have what we call the rule of three. Okay, now I just kind of made this rule up, but this is my own personal rule. And if I got to do this, you definitely have to do this because I've been teaching math and studying math for decades. And the rule of three is don't do any math until you read the problem at least three times. Okay, so the first time, just read the problem, get a basic sense of what's going on. The second time you read the problem, start thinking about, you know, how can you maybe solve the problem? And then the third time, make sure you understand precisely what the question is in the problem. Because oftentimes, uh, math students, they'll read the problem, they'll start doing math, they do a lot of great math, but guess what? They don't answer the right question. So uh, here, we have this flagpole uh, situation. We have a tree nearby. We need to really kind of interpret what's going on, take this uh, problem from words and translate it into a model, okay, a visual model. And anytime you can use a model, you know, kind of, uh, draw a sketch, a little diagram of what's going on, you know, that is excellent. So let's go to do this in this case. So we have this flagpole that's three meters tall. So let's draw uh, uh, a little uh, flagpole and its shadow of five meters. And then we'll put a tree nearby and we'll uh, show a little shadow of 62 meters for that tree. And again, the question is, is how tall is the tree? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at my little sketch. Now, yours doesn't have to be as fancy as this, but here is the ground. Here is our flagpole. Here is our nearby tree. So here is our flagpole, and here is the shadow for uh, the flagpole. Okay, so the flagpole is three meters. The shadow is five meters, and then we have this tree. At the same time, this tree is casting um, a shadow of 62 meters. Now, just to be super technical about this, right? Uh, this is like a little like snapshot in time. So here's the sun. The sun is moving, right? The uh, sun is moving from uh, east to west. So it's always, always moving in the sky, which means that the shadow is gonna be constantly moving. So we kind of have to uh, make some, uh, or assume some simplification of this problem. So this is one snapshot in time. So this flagpole is casting the shadow at the same moment 
this tree is casting this shadow. Now there's another assumption that we have to make, and that is that the flagpole is perpendicular to the ground. And that's not in the problem, uh, but we need to kind of assume that, right? So when you're uh, taking like a basic geometry course, it won't say it necessarily. Sometimes it will be very clear, oh, the flagpole is perpendicular to the ground, but you're not gonna draw a little bent flagpole like so. And you're gonna be like, hey teacher, how do I know that this flagpole wasn't bent over? Because that would, of course, uh, change the problem. And same thing with this tree. Right, so you know this tree. We uh, of course, you know, in nature, trees go all, you know, grow all kinds of crazy ways. But again, when it comes to uh, mathematics, just simplify the problem. So we're going to assume that the tree trunk, the tree here, is also perpendicular to the ground, i.e., it's forming a right angle like so. All right, so this is the basic situation, and what we want to know is the height of the tree. So how can we think about the solution here? Like, what can we do here? Well, what we want to do is construct this problem, this model, which is a pretty good interpretation of the actual word problem. But we need to kind of uh, uh, take a look at this at even more of a simplification, right? Like, just kind of distill down exactly what's going on. So here's our flagpole, and here's the shadow. Here's uh, the tree, and here is its shadow. So let's turn these into triangles, okay? So we're just simply gonna connect the shadow to the top of the flagpole, and then the shadow over here to the top of the tree. So what we have is two similar triangles, okay? Uh, now similar, uh, and this is a little symbol for similar in geometry, means that these triangles are effectively uh, copies of one another. In other words, here is a shape, if I zoom out, right, let's suppose I got my little cursor and I just kind of drug my mouse and I made a larger copy of this shape, well, that these two figures, these two triangles would be similar, okay? So here, you can kind of take a look at these triangles are effectively the same triangle, they're just, uh, uh, one's a smaller version of the other, or one's a larger version of the other, so we're talking about similarity, okay? Now, why is that the case? Because the sun is over here in this little time, whatever the sun, whatever proportion of the height of something and its shadow, the sun is going to cast the same proportion over here, right? So it doesn't make a difference. The sun is not going to cast a different, uh, the shadow of something at this moment of time is not going to be uh, a different proportion uh, than something else that's perpendicular to the ground. Hopefully that makes sense. And uh, But this being said now, what we're dealing with is two similar triangles. So in geometry, if you know you're dealing with two similar triangles, then we know that the sides of these similar triangles are in proportion, okay? Which means that, for example, this uh, the height to the shadow, which I can express as a ratio as 3 over 5, is the same proportion or it's the same ratio as the height of this tree, which is X to its shadow, which is 62. Okay, so here is a ratio and here is a ratio. And when you're dealing with similar triangles, these uh, two fractions are going to be equal. Okay, these ratios we can uh, solve for in a proportion. In other words, we can set these equal to one another. So the height uh, is the height of something to its shadow is always going to be equal, so the height is going to be equal to its shadow. So 3 over 5 is going to be equal to x over 62. So we can set up this lovely proportion right here. 3 over 5 is equal to x over 62. So again, the sides of similar triangles, the respective sides, um, or um, uh, corresponding sides, excuse me, that's the word I was looking for, are going to be in proportion, okay? So what that means is we can set up these proportions and solve. And remember, in mathematics, a proportion is two equal fractions. And to solve a proportion, a proportion, all we can do is, um, or all we need to do, excuse me, is use the cross product, okay? We just simply multiply across, so five times x is gonna be equal to three times 62, and we can solve very easily for x. Let's gonna do that right now. So again, we're going to be using the cross product, so five times x is five x, and that's gonna be equal to three times 62, so we'll write it that way. So three times 62, we can go into our lovely calculator, is 186. So five x is equal to 186, so to solve for x, I'm simply gonna divide both sides of the equation by five, and 186 divided by 5 is 
And again, remember, we are dealing with meters, okay? The height and the shadows were in meters. So you cannot forget the unit of measure. Uh, so the height of the tree is 37.2 meters, right? So if you put 37.2, but you forgot to put the meters in, your teacher could very well take a point or two off, and then you would have this look like this. You'd be very upset, and you'd be like, boy, I should have listened to that guy on YouTube. I forget what his name was, but he was indeed right. So remember, if um, you know if you do follow my videos or you know you watch this video, thank you very much. Anything I tell you comes from experience, decades and decades of teaching mathematics and studying mathematics. So when I emphasize something, you know, it's probably a good idea that you just kind of take it on board if you're interested in doing the best you can in mathematics. Okay, so if you need more help with this type of problem, check out my full geometry course at my Math Help program. I go over all types of similarity problems. I get into a lot more stuff that you need to know, but this is a pretty typical basic geometry problem that all of you should be able to uh, handle rather easily. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.